guys it's your girl melissa here welcome back to my studio and as you guys just saw i just went and bought some canvas so i got these three canvases they're 24 by 30 inch canvas and y'all literally all of the art stores in my area had no canvas of this size 24 by 30 like i usually get my canvas from michael's gone like the stores empty shelves the website sold out every michael's in gta like the greater toronto area and i was like okay well, what am i gonna do now the only other like big art store is curry's and I rarely go to Curry's, not that I don't like it or anything like that, it's just like I'm used to going to Michael's. So I'm like, okay, well, let me check Curry's. All the Curry's in my area sold out, none of this size canvas. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, this is probably COVID related, who knows? So luckily, literally one store, one store that was an hour drive from my house had the canvas so that was the journey that i just went on to get this canvas that's why i got three just in case <laughs> so i've never used curry's canvas before so i'm excited to see how it works out but it looks really high quality like maybe it's even better than michael's canvas we'll see so i got the gallery wrapped canvas i like the canvas with like the thicker edges i think it looks more professional you know so today i'm going to be starting a new painting on this canvas that I got. And the painting I'm doing is actually a commission. So I got commissioned to paint a portrait of my collector's grandfather. And this will be a gift for his father for his birthday, I believe. So that is the piece that I'll be working on in this video. But unfortunately, um, the collector has asked me not to show the painting online, like to my social media or on YouTube or anything like that, because he just wants to keep his grandfather's face private, which I totally, totally respect. So since I can't actually show you guys the process of me painting, this portrait I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you guys how I paint using my acrylic stay wet palette so I've been seeing a lot of questions of people asking me how I keep my acrylic paints wet for literally days um, as I work on a painting because you know anyone who uses acrylics knows that they dry out really quickly not like oil paints and I paint with acrylic paints because they're water-based and they're easier to work with and handle so I've found a way to keep these paints wet for literally days i'm not even exaggerating you guys are gonna see it's gonna take me a few days to finish this painting because it's a large canvas and you will see how these paints will just stay wet so that's what this video is about and i'm excited to show you guys this because i think it's a great tip for any artist using acrylic paints so yeah let's start this process <music> Let's go over all the supplies that you will need to make your palette. So first you're going to need a container with a lid. So this is obviously the main part of your palette. The paint is going to go inside the container and you need a lid to go on top so that you can keep as much moisture inside the container as possible. So it doesn't have to be airtight, it just has to be able to contain as much moisture as possible so I like this um, container I got it from Michaels and I like it because it's not 
too deep of a container so you can easily you know dip your brush in there and like get your paint without messing up your palette and all that stuff so and this one is also very large so you can mix a lot of colors um, without your palette getting like overcrowded next you're gonna need some paper towel so literally any paper towel will do obviously you can get this anywhere and then you're gonna need the secret ingredient which is parchment paper so this is a roll of parchment paper and you can get this from the dollar store or walmart and this is what we're going to be putting our paint on so parchment paper is key then we're going to need some water so i have some water in a jar here and you're also going to need water in a spray bottle so the water is easier to disperse. We'll go over the process right after this, but yeah, you're gonna need some water. Then you're gonna need a pair of scissors, and the last thing you're gonna need is a palette knife. So this is for mixing your paints. So yeah, now that you have everything you need, let's get into how to make this palette. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is take our container and our paper towel, and we're just going to put a couple layers of the paper towel on the bottom of the container. So you could do two layers. I like to do three layers of paper towel. It really depends how thick you want your base to be. And obviously the more paper towel you put, the more water it will hold so yeah i just folded up three layers of paper towel and if your container is smaller than this like my container literally just happens to be the perfect size for these squares of paper towel but if it's smaller you can just take your scissors and cut the paper towel like the excess so once you have your paper towel in, you wanna grab your cup of water and you wanna start pouring some water into the container on the paper towel. And you don't wanna put too much at once. Like I'm just putting a couple splashes of water. And like you want the paper towel to be wet, but you don't want it to be like soaked through. And that's why we have our spray bottle because we put the majority of the water down with the container but for the spray bottle we just spray whatever parts of the paper towel are still dry. Okay so that's good. Now that our paper towel is wet we want to kind of just like spread it out because there's a lot of like wrinkles on it and it's not a smooth and flat enough surface for us to mix our paint on. So we legit just want to like smooth out the paper towel. And this might seem weird, but want it to be as smooth as possible. So I'm just like spreading the surface and like the water will come out on the edges and that's fine. If it's not spreading enough, maybe you need more water. And that's why I love the spray bottle because you can add water as you need it. So yeah, let's just spread out this paper towel. So there we go. It doesn't have to be perfect, obviously, as you can see, but it just has to be flat enough. So once we've got our paper towel all flat, now it's time to add the parchment paper. So you wanna take your roll of parchment paper and kind of measure it against your container. And you're gonna use your scissors to cut out the amount that you need. So I'm just gonna cut out the piece. But... And then here you'll see like my parchment paper is a bit bigger than my container so I'm gonna cut this excess off as well. All right. And then what I like to do is I like to take the spray bottle again and kind of like mist the parchment paper a little. Like I, you don't want it super soaked. You just want it a little bit wet and then I take the wet side that I just sprayed and I flip it over. 
And then we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the paper towel. We're gonna to spread out the parchment paper so that it sticks and that it's as flat as possible. So just use your fingers to gently spread it out and you know, be patient, like it's not a race. You don't wanna rip um, your parchment paper. So it's gonna take us some time. You could see like the edges are lifting up, but it's okay, like eventually, it'll lay down for you. All right, y'all, so there we have it. The parchment paper is nice and flat and smooth. And if the top surface is a little bit too wet, you could just grab some paper towel and you could just like take all the excess water from the top if you need to do that. So yeah, this surface is ready for some paint. Okay guys, so now it's time to mix our colors. So you're only going to want to mix the colors that you need for your current paint session. If you know you're gonna need a lot of colors for your painting, but some of the colors you won't be using like today, like right now, I would suggest you hold off until when you actually need those colors to mix them on the palette. And that's because after a really long time of your paints staying in here, they can get a little bit like watery or runny. So we wanna avoid having the paint stay in here for like a really long time. I'm talking like a week, you know? That's why today I know I'm only gonna have time to paint the background today. So I'm only mixing the colors that I need for the background. And then tomorrow I'm gonna continue mixing the colors on the palette as I need them. So yeah, now you're just gonna mix your colors like you would mixing any other palette. The main thing though is as you're mixing, if you're using a palette knife, I know not everyone uses a palette knife to mix colors, but I prefer it. Um, careful not to let your palette knife rip the parchment paper. That's something that actually happens to me a lot and it's really annoying. <laughs> Probably because my palette knife is really pointy. I was, I'm thinking of actually getting like a rounder one, but this is just the only one I have right now. Yeah, just be really careful if you're using a palette knife and you're mixing. The parchment paper can rip and it's not the end of the world, it's just annoying. So yeah, <laughs> all right, let's mix these colors. to painting. done on this piece just blocked in the background but I have a lot of other stuff that I have to get done today so I'm just gonna put this painting on hold but to close off our palette for the night all we're gonna do is we're gonna get our lid and we're just going to seal up our container close it up and now this palette is secured 
in the container and the wet paper towels on the bottom will keep the paint wet inside and the moisture is trapped in this container. So the moisture won't stay trapped forever because this container is not airtight. I actually unhinged the back of this because I wanted the top to come off completely. So the back of this container is kind of cracked open a bit. So it won't stay wet forever, but that's fine. It will stay wet until tomorrow and a few days after that. So that's all we really need. So I'm just gonna leave this here for the night and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace. So it is day two of our painting. And as you all can see, the paints are still wet. So obviously that's what we want. But if you look, there are some like dry patches like on the parchment paper. So you wanna touch it and feel it and see how wet it still is. So mine has dried out a bit and what we're gonna do is replenish the water. So I'm gonna take my spray bottle the water and I'm gonna spray more water on the paper towel so you want to do this every now and then when the paper towel feels like it's drying out like it's not completely dry it's a little bit damp but it's not as wet as we want it to be so that is a key tip to keeping your paints wet or multiple multiple days so yeah you want to replenish the water so let's do it so basically we're going to lift up the parchment paper like this so you guys can see I'm lifting the parchment paper and this is the paper towel and then we're gonna take our water and we're just gonna spray more water on here you can see it's getting wet it and then you put it back down and then you want to do this for every corner so do the next corner lift it up spray you don't want it to be soaked though next side lift it up spray and then Last corner, lift it, spray it. Boom. All right. So today I'm gonna start working on the face of this portrait. So now I'm going to add all of the colors that I need to paint the face. So I'm gonna mix up the different colors that I need. And then once I have all my colors mixed, I could get to painting. So we'll see how much I get done. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you guys um, the progress like I usually do, but it's okay. This video is all about the palette anyways. So yeah, let's get to mixing my second round of paints. <laughs>
y'all so i have officially finished my painting it took about four days of painting to get it all done but finally it's finished i'm really happy with how it looks and i hope my collector likes it as well so let's take a look at how my palette is doing as you can see it held up for the four plus days there were a couple days in between that i wasn't painting and all my paint stayed wet. I do want to show you guys a little mishap here. I don't know if you could see, but I made a hole by accident with my palette knife when I was mixing this purple. Like if I lift this up, you guys can see the hole right there. It's a pretty big hole, but I kind of just tried to push the paint over the hole, but the hole wasn't a big deal. Clearly I was still able to use the palette efficiently. So yeah, so before I end this video, I just want to make a quick disclaimer. I did not invent the concept of stay wet palettes. I don't know who like came up with it first. I think it's something I actually saw on YouTube and there actually is a company or a few companies that make pre-made stay wet palettes and I actually bought one. Let me show you guys. It's this blue palette right here it's really big as you can see yeah it's very huge oh my gosh there's stuff in there oh my gosh i didn't even know there was a palette inside here you guys oh my gosh well look at that <laughs> clearly these are not wet right now like it doesn't last forever but I don't use this too often, obviously, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that I think it's too deep. Like, I feel like it's way too deep, like dipping your brushes in versus this is a lot thinner and I like that better, like a thinner edge versus this, versus this deep container. But if you guys don't mind that and if you don't want to go through the trouble of making your own you could definitely just buy one which is way easier it comes with everything you need i think it also comes with like sponges instead of paper towel that you could use um and i believe the seal is like airtight like it's pretty tight of a seal compared to like a container that you might use to make on your own so it's just up to personal preference like this one is obviously cheaper. I can't remember how much this costs, but it wasn't cheap. So yeah, just figure out whichever way works best for you. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you learned something new um, that you could apply to your artistry. 
Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about the palette or anything else really and I'd love to answer them. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you like this video so you can see more art videos like this. Thanks again for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace! Thank you.